Uh, as I listed in the introduction, a basic undergraduate probability and statistics course uh, is a prerequisite for this one. Uh, so we'll go over some of the key concepts uh, in today's lecture uh, that will be useful later. Uh, since probability is a measure defined on the sample space of events uh, and all its relevant subsets, uh, we'll start with a quick review of set theory. Uh, the next 15 or so slides uh, will be rather dense. Uh, there will be a lot of text and symbols. Um, I will not go through them verbatim, uh, but if you need to, please pause the video for the details. Um, you will find all these in the course material, of course. Uh, the topics that we would uh, cover uh, are the basic definitions, uh, the basic set relations, uh, basic set operations, and uh, a few words on the algebra of sets. Uh, for further reading, uh, these are the two excellent uh, texts, uh, the Real Analysis book by Royden and uh, A Probability Path by Sidney Resnick. Now a set is completely defined uh, by its members. Uh, we typically use uppercase letters to denote sets and uh, lowercase letters to denote its members. Uh, you can either list the members uh, or you can state the membership rule if possible and which is obviously preferred for large sets. Now in probability theory uh, we call the universal set the sample space. Everything that can happen in the context of the problem and then we assign probabilities to the relevant collection of its subsets. Uh, now one set that must be present in that collection is the null set, uh, the impossible event. Uh, if not the null set, then a set is either finite or infinite. Uh, if there are two sets, A and B, uh, they may have some common members uh, or none at all. Uh, if none at all, uh, we call them disjoint or mutually exclusive. Uh, in some situations, all elements of A could also belong to B. Then we call A a subset of B. Uh, if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A, then A and B are equal. Uh, let's solve a simple example on the next slide. So as you see, um, I have defined four sets in terms of membership rules. Uh, now if you want to work through this example now, please pause the video. Otherwise, uh, here is the answer. Uh, so if you solve the quadratic equation for A, then A uh, is composed of the integers 1 and 3. Likewise, B is 1 and 2, uh, C is also 1 and 2, and D is 1 and 3. So the answer is that the sets uh, A and D are equal, and B and C are equal. Now, if we define an event A in the sample space, then we automatically define what occurs when a does not occur. So that is the complement of A and we uh, denote the uh, complement of A either by an overbar uh, or a superscript C next to A. Uh, for two events in the sample space, uh, we need to define the intersection and assign probability to it uh, and we will often skip the intersection symbol and just denote the intersection by uh, AB. Now for the same two events A and B we can be interested in their union, their difference and their symmetric difference. Uh, the, the symmetric difference is saying that A alone occurs or B alone occurs. They do not occur together. Now, these identities are useful. Uh, 
the associative laws, the distributive laws, uh, the De Morgan's laws. Uh, and now let's solve one example using some of these identities in the next slide. So uh, we need to prove that A union B difference AB uh, is A difference B union B difference A. So again, if you want to solve this, uh, please pause the video, otherwise I'll proceed. Uh, so the first step is to define uh, what is meant by the difference of two sets. So x difference y is x intersection y complement. So that's what we are using uh, to first expand the left hand side. And then uh, we use De Morgan's laws. And then uh, we use the distributive law once and then once more. And then identify the null sets uh, because A intersection A complement is the null set. Uh, likewise, uh, B intersection B complement is also the null set. And then we again use the identity uh, in the reverse way that X difference Y is X intersection Y complement and which is nothing but the right hand side so it's proved uh, one more concept that's quite useful uh, we often need to split the sample space into disjoint events that taken together make up the entire sample space so we call them uh, mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive or in other words a partition for example uh, if a structure can be subjected to high winds and earthquake uh, and suppose these are the only two loads possible so then a partition of the load space would be uh, W E complement W complement E W and E and W complement and E complement so these four would constitute a partition. <coughs> 